Algebra 2 cram, New York State Algebra 2 regions. But no worries, this is a common core cram session, so it can be used for any Algebra 2 course anywhere throughout the United States. So shout out to Moldova, India, Canada, the UK, Georgia, Texas, California, and everywhere else. Functions, question 14, evaluate a composition of inverse functions. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. Inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that you can order and purchase the complete Algebra 2 cram session. You have lots of friends, classmates, peers, or even colleagues who are taking Algebra 2 alongside you. Be sure to spread the word and tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can get an a, like a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, all right? Question 14, composition of inverse functions. If f of x is equivalent to x to the third minus x, what is f inverse of f of two? And be careful, this is not a negative exponent. If it were, that would have been clearly specified. Is it going to be a one-third? b2, c3, or d, negative 3. Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a chance to evaluate this composition of functions at 2. All right, so the composition position of inverse functions. The concept of an inverse function is that it basically undoes whatever the original function does to the input or independent variable. Okay, therefore with appropriate domain restrictions whenever applicable, and when I say appropriate domain restrictions, I mean limiting the interval that you're observing or the evaluating the function over. That means instead of the entire set of real numbers from negative infinity to infinity, examples of restrictions could be from 0 to 100, negative 2 to 10, you name it, just not the entire set of real numbers on the number line. All right, so with appropriate domain restriction, this is a general rule of thumb. f inverse of f of x is going to also be equivalent to f of f inverse of x because they simply are undoing each other and both of these expressions are just going to be equivalent to x. Since these cancel each other out, you end up with x, okay? And this notation is interchangeable with this notation. And if you want more in-depth knowledge and a full complete background of what inverse functions are, definitely watch my um, Cram Basic series on inverse functions, okay? It'll give you a full background overview of this concept of composition of inverse functions. Okay, so f inverse of f of x is equal to f of f inverse of x, which is also equivalent to x. So all these expressions are interchangeable with each other, okay? Now to evaluate f inverse of f of 2. Well, if you commit to memory that these functions undo each other, that means you would just be left over with the input value. And instead of evaluating the function by uh, first finding f inverse of x, and then you know actually plugging 2 in to evaluate the composition of function, you would just know that these cancel each other out and you're, you end up with 2. Hence, um, the correct answer choice is answer choice B. But if you did go the route of doing the extra work, which would increase your chances of making a mistake that would reflect your skill, but it would not reflect your intelligence? Because intelligence means producing an answer as swiftly as correct and correctly as possible. It's not necessarily a demonstration of skill unless you need to show your work. Okay, but let's say you did want to take the other route, definitely watch my Cram Basics overview of uh, inverse functions, and this same example will be in it, but 
the long version with actually plugging two in. All right. Thanks for tuning in.